How's it going, Rail fans? Welcome back to another episode of Trains with Shane on the I Saw It Online YouTube channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if this is your first time joining us, my name is Shane, and this is going to be another one of the Will It Run series. We've got something a little different today. Usually we have something a little less fancy, like a Bachman or a Lifelike or, or something ancient. And what we have today is another eBay find. Uh, we have an Atlas. This is a uh, GE U25B. Interestingly, the box says Seaboard Systems, but uh, let me get the top off here. Unboxings. Yeah. Looks like we have a Delaware and a Hudson. And the road number here is 302, but historically the Delaware and Hudson 302 was a steam locomotive. It was not a U-boat. So I'm guessing this is probably a custom job. And they fudged the road number, which is fine. I'm not a, I'm not a stickler for 100% authenticity. Um, honestly, it's a pretty good custom paint, if in fact it is. You can see we've got paint down here on the bottom. Um, what may or may not show up in the camera here. You guys see that? Well, it's probably easier to see on the box made in Japan. So what we have here is an atlas that was manufactured by Kato, which is generally a sign of good quality. Um, atlas had Kato manufacturing their end scale for a long time uh, before they decided to have a go at it themselves and offload it to China. And I think Atlas has al also used Roco in the past. Um, this is appears to be a later version because the uh, the older ones of which I have one have a uh, truck mounted couplers and not body mounted couplers um, although this may be a conversion kit because those kits are available to put uh, microtrains knuckle couplers on a unit that had the truck mounted Rapido cu couplers. Uh, from what I understand, it's a, an expensive little conversion. I only paid 30 bucks for this thing. Um, the seller had it on sale for 50. I sent him an offer of 30 and he took it. I couldn't believe it either. So, very nice looking little unit. Let's get it over onto the layout and see if it runs. All right guys, we're over here on the switching layout. So you've got power, forward direction, roll in the power, no, no, nothing, full power, that jiggly, we did see a light blink, let's see, you guys seeing it? Come on. Nope, she doesn't want to go. Dial our power back down. Let's try something a little different. Stand by. All right. For my uh, my friends who were around in the early 90s, what does Tim the Toolman always need? More power. <laughs> okay, so what we've got, we've got uh, a little Kato unit here that I just picked up. Again, off of eBay, like everything else, I got it cheap. Let's... Uh, Dial her in. More power, more power, full power. Oh, oh. Oh, we had life. Let's put her in reverse here. A little too far. Come on. Oh, ran back. Let's change direction. Dial it up. 
We're at full power here. Oh no! Train an emergency. A little bit of a derail on my switch there. Let's uh, reset. think we're on track here. All right, power, dial it in. Slow speed is not good. May need to be cleaned. Let's bring her back. It's getting better as we use it, but then you can dial it all the way up here and she won't move. My track is pretty clean. So you give her a nudge, and she takes off. And she comes back. Pretty smooth. Fairly quiet, too. Uh, this unit does have flywheels on it, so that's probably why it's so smooth. Um, what do you say we take this back over to the workbench and uh, maybe give it a little clean? I'll see you over there. All right, we are back over on the disgusting workbench. I've already removed the, uh, the tank cap here just so I could get access to uh, both sides of the chassis here what we're gonna do is excuse my arm here dial up a little bit of power and we're gonna go directly to the chassis so we can bypass any uh, potential contact problems if you can see it these wheels are pretty dirty Oh yeah, definitely working right when going directly to the chassis, so I'll bet our problems are just ones of lack of cleanliness on the wheels here. So we're going to take care of that with our uh, customary t-shirt scraps. Move the traditional Z-Quill over because I have trouble sleeping, or actually I have trouble getting to sleep. Once I'm asleep, I'm okay. All right, load it up with a little bit of clean strip mineral spirits. Not sponsored. I pay for everything you guys see out of my own money. Just kind of why I end up working on this used stuff because this new stuff is expensive. All right, let's see. We get dialed in to the right. amount of voltage here. There we go. Let's see if we can make something a little bit better for ourselves here. Just a little bit of wipe down. Looking better so far. You do not want to put a ton of pressure on these. Let the mineral spirits do the work. Let these flywheels rev back up. They'll carry a little bit of torque for us. Let's check out our work. Not looking great. I don't want to get something more aggressive, but we will if we have to. Let me switch sides here. Come on, fingers, work. There we go.
turn off our power here. Move our electrodes to the side. It's not looking, not looking fantastic. We can certainly get more aggressive if we need to. I mean, I've got some some fine grit sandpaper here. It honestly, it's not my favorite thing in the world to use because I don't want to remove any material. But let's give her a, a quick buzz on one of these wheels and see what we can come up with. I'm, I'm obviously right-handed. Left hand can't do anything. Okay. Really spinning her up. Try not to stay in one place too long. You want to move back and forth. Well, certain improvement there. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off just to get it out of my way so I can pretty much repeat this process on the remaining seven wheels, and I'll bring you back. All right, guys, that didn't take too long. I just didn't want you guys to have to suffer through it. As you can see, very clean. So we're going to uh, pop our cap back on. Looks like it's symmetrical, so either way will probably work. I think it's symmetrical. There we go. All right. back over to the switching layout and we'll see what we've done. All right guys, back on the switching layout. Let's dial up a little bit. Ooh, we've got slow movement. Let's give it a little bit of a nudge. There we go. Slow speed performance is okay till we get to the switch there. Let's dial up a little more. Not bad. Let's bring her back. Whoa, easy there, Chief. Slow. That was only about a third power. Sometimes these things tend to get hung up right at this rail jointer here. I may need to, it's kind of rough. I may need to go over that with a, with a sanding block or something. Performance has improved drastically. A lot more control. I don't have to juice it with full power to get it moving. You can juice it with full power and she scoots out pretty good. Um, something else that it uh, does now, which it didn't, it, it carries a little bit of momentum now, thanks to the flywheels. So, overall, I'd say this has been very successful. Um, I really wasn't planning on doing a, a will it run on this per se but um yeah i mean you guys saw it it didn't really want to go so um proof that i work on more than just bargain basement bachmans um although those are very fun to work on um i wanted to give um 
I wanted to show you that it's possible to buy an Atlas or a Kato or something and it need work. Um, a lot of people online, and I saw it today and it made me mad that, uh, oh, Bachmans are junk. I don't see why anyone would own a Bachman. And it took everything I had to keep from getting on top of that guy and giving him the business. Um, people buy Bachmans maybe because they can't afford something nicer. You know, not everyone makes a ton of money. You know, maybe people are out here buying used again because they don't make a ton of money. And honestly, it pisses me off a little bit when people start acting like that. So, um, I wanted to show that just because you bought a nice name, you know, like Atlas or Kato, which I absolutely love, by the way, um, it can need work. They don't just always run. So, here we've got a, a pretty nice little unit now. And a, a pretty cool custom paint. I, I really lucked out with this one. Um, I've got more units coming. Um, I've got a nice big lifelike, I think it's an SD45 or something like that, in uh, Electromotive Division Demonstrator colors, so I couldn't live without that. Um, what else? I've got another Atlas coming, um, an RS11, an Alco RS11. Um, I don't know who made that one. Um, just yet. It could be Kado, could be Roco, could be Atlas in China. Um, just some other stuff coming up, guys. So we're going to end this one here. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I know that uh, everyone puts that on their videos. The last couple videos have done really well. I want to thank you guys for watching them. Um, let's just get a conversation going, you know? get the algorithm to notice our channel and what we're doing here. Um, suggest it to some more rail fans. There's a lot of HR scale stuff out there, but not a ton of N scale stuff. And uh, not a lot of people doing fixer uppers on N scale. So I'd like to get this out there. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it for my advertising. So again, guys, thanks for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.